In this video, we'll do an example of fitting a polynomial to some data. The polynomial we want to fit is a parabola, and we want to find the a2, a1, and a0 coefficients. This is obviously nonlinear, and in previous videos, we would attempt to linearize the polynomial and then transform the data accordingly. However, the presence of the a1x term makes the parabola incredibly difficult to linearize. Sometimes, it's just easier to let the function do the work for us. As previously seen, the fit function accepts three main arguments, the x data, the y data, and the fit type argument. The fit type argument is a character vector representing the type of curve fit you want. For example, we can supply poly1 and we'll get a straight line curve fit. It turns out that we can actually supply up to a ninth order polynomial. We can also fit things like exponential and power models directly without needing to linearize the data, although the curve fit coefficients will probably differ slightly than if you linearize. This is what I refer to as the direct method. Instead of linearizing the data, you directly curve fit by giving the fit function the appropriate fit type argument. Let's see how to apply that to this problem. The premise is unchanged from previous curve fitting problems. First, you load and plot the data. Next, you call the fit function. Then, you plot the best fit line. And lastly, you use the newly found regression equation to predict some values. By now, you've seen a spin-off of this code many times, so I'm not going to be typing much. In fact, I've already run the code and I'm going to step through it rather quickly. Here, we load and plot the dataset which can be found in the link in the video description. The kicker is how we call the fit function. X and Y are both transposed because X and Y themselves are row vectors. However, the fit function only works with column vectors. Next, we supply the poly2 argument instead of the poly1 argument, like past examples. The poly2 argument corresponds to a second order polynomial fit, which is perfect because we need to fit the data to a parabola. If you double click on the FO object in the workspace, you can see the best fit equation. To actually extract and store the coefficients in a variable for further manipulation, you can use the cofvalues function. This is the a2 parameter, this is the a1 parameter, and this is the a0 parameter, or the y-intercept. The r-squared value for this curve fit is great. It's pretty close to 1, which is ideal. Looking at the plot certainly confirms that. The best fit parabola appears to fit the data well, but it looks like we could do better. If you look at the general shape the data points make, it sort of looks like a power law or an exponential model. Let's try fitting both a power law and an exponential model for fun. The power one argument produces a curve fit with a lower r squared than the parabolic fit. Visually, the fit doesn't look as good as the parabola. Perhaps the power two argument is better. Mathematically, the power 2 fit is the same as the power 1 fit, but with the addition of a vertical offset. The r squared of the power 2 fit is pretty dang close to 1, and the improved power model appears to hug the data much more tightly. This fit is even better than the parabolic fit. Now we tried an exponential fit. It's pretty terrible as indicated by the r squared. The data appears to be leveling off, but the exponential fit keeps increasing. Mathematically, the EXP2 model is composed of two separate exponential terms. This results in a very tight curve fit. This is the highest R squared of the models we've tested, and the best fit line seems to represent the trends in the data extremely well. And just for fun, I tried fitting a sine wave to the data. It actually turned out better than I thought. Okay, that's enough messing around. We've obtained the coefficients of the parabolic curve fit, but the power two and exp2 fits are actually better. So why not use these models? This is why you need to understand the context and the source of your data. We aren't given any context in this problem, but maybe the data came from an experiment which is mathematically governed by a second order polynomial and not an exponential. If that's the case, then using an exponential, power, sine, or any other type of fit would be incorrect no matter how much better the fit is compared to the parabolic fit. This concludes the polynomial regression example. 
Although quick, I hope you saw how to change the fit type argument so that you can quickly test out multiple curve fitting options. The fit function is extremely versatile. I encourage you to reread the documentation if you haven't already, just to see what else it can do. Once again, even though some types of curve fits may produce a higher R squared than others, it doesn't necessarily mean it's contextually correct. See you next time.